Coming up, things like this, 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 that, this and this. Fellow worklings, let's dive in the Battle of Quatre Bras, the final version, part 2. This battle was not a pitched battle, as a picture would suggest. It was more a back and forth of near victory and defeat for both sides. As the reinforcements came mostly regiment per regiment and in their arrival tipping the scales frequently for each side. Wellington was at a ball and questioned the loyalty of the Prince of Orange. In the past he had acted to his own judgment and would do so again here. The Duke would also doubt the loyalty of the Dutch and Belgian forces under his command. Prince Karl Bernard of Saxe Weimar Eisenach and Lieutenant General Henry George Baron Porponche Sedlinski were sent against Wellington's command to march towards Nivelle and went to fight at Quatre Bras instead. If they haven't done this, then the French would march unopposed towards Brussels and flank the Prussians easily. So they know what needs to be done. All the crossroads at Quatre Bras to protect Brussels and keep the communication lines with the Prussians. The Allied officers discuss at Quatre Bras on how to hold the crossroads. Ney gives late orders to concentrate his scattered French forces. The French visibility is bad. Seeing hills, high grain and forests, the Allies spread out so they seem like a larger force. And it works. Meanwhile, French artillery is on their way. Did you know that a cannon fired with a chest high fire directory would be most effective? Allied batteries open fire on the French marching. While French light cavalry moves up, there is a depiction of light lancer cavalry from 1812. They cover the right flank as they aggressively scout the Allied defenses at the intersection. One of the tasks of light cavalry was scouting. Armed with a lance and sabre, wearing a brass helmet and a green uniform. Bachelieu's 5th Division marches to Jemiancourt Farm, via La Rai Farm and Pyromont, as they come under artillery barrages. Foix follows on the left in support with his 1st Brigade. His 2nd Brigade is forming at Fran, waiting to be relieved by the next column, before marching forward. As they move up, Dutch forces and the 27th Jagers meet them, trying to hold them back. As they marched, they spread out in platoons in three sections, in a two-rank line formation with NCOs on each flank, working separately in two-man teams, with one firing and another keeping an eye out to not being cut off from their comrades. The assault on Loray Farm begins. While at the intersection, Nassauers and the militia try to hold off the French, as many Nassauers had previously served in the French army, but due to the Congress of Vienna, were separated and now part of the Netherlands army. They managed to keep the French cavalry at bay, with the help of Winsinger's artillery, however, the Reis cavalry manages to spot the dispositions of the battalions. As a battle for La Rey Farm and Pyramont rages on, the Allies try to hold off the overwhelming numbers. The French charge forward with their muskets held up and go in the farms. La Rai Farm is quickly taken by Campy's 2nd Brigade under Bachelet. Another French regiment enters the stage. By the way, not every French soldier and especially officers were psychologically 100%. They had their doubts about this campaign because they betrayed their new king for their previous Emperor Napoleon. In the process, fighting against former brothers in arms. Pyramon falls quickly into French hands 
as French cavalry is flanking the skirmishers and the 27th Jagers try to retreat toward high ground and Materne Pont. This was light cavalry, ideal for quick maneuvering, scouting and skirmishing. However, with their lances they were also shock troops. When cavalry charged, they would first trot under 10 miles per hour or 16 km per hour, then speed up to a brisk gallop within 250 yards or 230 meters of the enemy. A horse with a rider would be 10 to 12 miles or 20 kilometers per hour faster than a running soldier. Foy and the regiment marched from Franc to Quatre Bras. The left of the marching French are slowed down by marshy ground. Belleville battery takes advantage and focuses his fire there. General de Perponcher orders the 5th Militia Battalion under Lieutenant Colonel Westenbergs towards Jemioncourt farm and surroundings by the road to Chalois. They get fired upon by the French artillery at La Rey farm, but the 5th keep on marching. About 50 to 60 percent of the militiamen are volunteers. They will bear the brunt of the French attack. Here are the French guns firing. Van der Sande with his 7th militia battalion reinforce the farm. They will prevent the French from taking it. The French artillery targets Belleville's battery. As more French cannons reinforce La Rey farm, Belleville's brigade retreats here. The French artillery new target is Stevenard's artillery brigade. The 5th and 7th militia battalion are under Van Bijlaan's brigade. These units will be the most decimated brigade among the Allies during this whole battle. The French reach a valley near the Namur road and got ambushed by the 27th Jagers and the militia. The Allies retreat toward high ground in tall cornfields with torn hedges in front. As a Dutch or Belgian <laughs> artillery battery opens fire upon them. and the 27th set up a semi-skirmish line from Jemiancourt and west of the farm. The French press on, while sappers cut down some torn hedges. Some are a formidable obstacle, 2 to 3 meters high and a meter thick. So being slowed down and making them easier targets, the Allied infantry, hiding in the tall cornfields behind the torn hedges, Take aim. They open murderous volleys at point blank range and the French waver. The Prince of Orange leads his Dutch Belgian forces forwards. They charge at the French. Hit with devastating volley fire combined with artillery barrages, the French line begins to retreat while the Allied left flank is gradually falling back due to the increasing artillery reinforcing. While Jamais arrived with two French regiments at Quatre Bras and will support the retrograde movement while Higonet stands his ground with his men. French sappers and grenadiers make openings. Jamais engages pursuing Dutch forces. As most of the French line retreats, Higonet and his men stand firm. Higonet's men are lining up. Men! Level muskets! Defensive fire! Higonet charges forward. Captain Arnaud's sword broke in a melee, seized a musket with a bayonet and killed nine allies. Jamais engages pursuing Dutch forces. The French retreat is partially covered. The Allies charge too far from their environmental cover in the scope of the French artillery.
who mow down Allied infantry together with French volley fire. The French charge as a whole Allied line falls back. As a whole Allied line falls back, the Lancers and Chasseurs flank the militiamen. I think you can see here the 7th Regiment de Chevaux Légère Lancier, but normally only the 2nd Cavalry Division under Piré would be here, and the 7th are no part of this division. 2nd Cavalry Division consisted of 4 regiments, or 800 to 1200 men divided in 3 or 4 escadrons, of 2 companies each, plus supporting elements. They lean forward and point their lances at the Dutch infantry who brace themselves. The first company of every light cavalry regiment's first escadron was elite with probably the best men and horses. The French command and operating structure made it more presumably that the French cavalry had reserves available and the potential to use them to exploit during a counterattack, a breakthrough in the enemy line or seal a gap in their own line. Another French regiment joins the fray. The 5th Militia will never reach Jemiancourt farm on time. So Westenberg orders square formation. Allies are tense as the ground shakes beneath their feet. Drops of sweat on pale skins. Lieutenant Colonel Westenberg leading the 5th Militia said the iconic words. Het moet allemaal niet zo precies jongens. Squares don't have to be perfect. Ça ne doit pas être parfait. He eased the tension with his humor. The lancers and chasseurs charge repeatedly but with constant fire from Jemiancourt, Stevenard's cannons and from within the square, the French cavalry attacks are fruitless. The 7th Line Battalion is less fortunate and are not able to form squares against the cavalry. They are ordered to run towards Bois de Bossu. They barely reach the woods in time, except for Lieutenant Skeltons who couldn't reach the woods in time, but he hides under a horse-drawn cart. The 5th Militia reach the farm safely. So Pires cavalry turn their attention elsewhere. Jamais' path is clear towards Jemiancourt farm and assaults the farm to gain control of the center of the battlefield. The inexperienced 5th militia fire constantly with the courage of despair but due to the overwhelming force they are losing morale and are seconds away from routing. With the help of reinforcements from the 7th militia battalion they manage to keep the farm out of French hands. But Foix bombards the farm with a howitzer and the French win the farm. While some French troops charge too far in the range of Allied cannons, still the Dutch-Belgian forces try to defend the crossroads with their lives. Throwing their last reinforcements against the French waves of assault. But behind the hills, the French cannot see what is coming their way. These are Scottish troops. It's possibly they didn't enter the stage at this moment but later on. However, in case they did arrive at this point of the battle, they were hidden right until the French were so close They opened fire with a massive volley, 
As this fire came out of nowhere, the battle rages on in its full glory and all its horror. As is this picture, the 79th Highlanders charge forward. With the rest of their comrades, charging with their bayonets and the French retreats because they were too far from their units unable to get supports. <laughs> <laughs> 